Uh, thank you, Madam President, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I want to start by saying that this side of the House fully accepts the health risks of smoking. In fact, there cannot be a sane person under the age uh, or above the age of 16 and possibly younger who isn't well aware of the health risks of smoking tobacco. Historically, as far as health is concerned, mistakes have been made on all sides. For decades, most people were ignorant of the health risks of smoking, including governments and the medical profession. Let's not forget that cigarettes were once handed out to the armed forces, while doctors were once more than happy to promote certain brands of cigarette. Even if it was ever true, and I would dispute it, the description of the tobacco industry as morally reprehensible is decades out of date. Most of the evidence we've heard already tonight relates to the 50s, 60s or 70s, not 2015. The tobacco industry doesn't hide the potential health risks. On Imperial Tobacco's website, under smoking and health, you will find the following, and I quote, Smoking is a cause of serious diseases in smokers, including lung cancer, heart disease, and emphysema. We agree that governments and public health authorities around the world should provide clear and consistent messages about the health risks of smoking. Adults should be guided by those messages when deciding whether or not to smoke. Children should never smoke. Similar messages can be found on other tobacco company websites. Now, when the opposition talks about the tobacco industry, they're talking about thousands of ordinary people, decent, honourable men and women. In Britain alone, it is estimated that 5,000 people are directly employed by the industry. A further 80,000 people have jobs that depend on tobacco retailers, packaging companies, logistics, and so on. Now, across Africa, there are hundreds of thousands of small farmers who make a living selling this so-called reprehensible crop. Then there are the hundreds of factory workers who process tobacco and turn it into tobacco products. The next step is the retailers, thousands of small retailers who sell tobacco across the United Kingdom. If people are going to make moral judgments on the industry, then you are making a judgment on everyone in the tobacco chain, including government. Now, in the UK, on average, 86% of the price of a packet of cigarettes is taxation. British American Tobacco alone estimates that it contributed £30 billion in excise globally last year, which is eight times the group's profits after tax. So let's be clear. The biggest benefactors from smoking are governments, not big tobacco. Governments and, industry, governments and industry are partners in the tobacco business, and governments are the senior partners. Now, I'm not here to represent the tobacco industry, and I hope to have time to come on to their absence a bit later. But I do want to make the following points. First of all, tobacco is a legal, highly regulated product. The idea that the tobacco industry can do whatever it likes is laughable. It is one of the most heavily regulated industries in the entire world. Regardless of the health risks, what the tobacco industry manufactures and sells is a quality product that has undergone years of research and development. Compare it, for example, with the smuggled or counterfeit cigarettes widely available on the black market in Britain today. According to reports, ingredients have included human excrement, asbestos, mould and dead flies. Now today, the tobacco industry is spending billions of pounds on the development of smokeless tobacco and other harm reduction products, including e-cigarettes. That doesn't sound like a morally reprehensible industry to me. What is morally reprehensible and irresponsible are the policies advocated by tobacco control campaigners. Policies like extreme taxation, for example, which have resulted in a black market awash with counterfeit or unregulated tobacco. Now, what about the consumer, the people that my organization, Forest, represents? Tobacco is consumed by approximately 25% of adults worldwide, and in the UK, 20% of the adult population smoke. That's not a small minority, that's a fifth of the adult population. 
Are we seriously supposed to think that 10 million adults in the UK alone are enthralled to some evil, immoral industry? Tobacco control activists are quick to accuse the tobacco industry of profiting from and feeding people's addiction, as if consenting adults have no say in the matter. But ladies and gentlemen, smoking is a lifestyle choice. No one is arguing it's good for you. It's your choice. Yes, it's potentially addictive, but for most people it's a habit, and there's a huge difference between a habit and addiction. And like it or not, smoking brings pleasure to a great many people. The tobacco industry doesn't create demand, it meets demand. Smoking is around, was around long before the tobacco industry existed. David Hockney is one of Britain's greatest artists. He's an ardent smoker. He smokes for pleasure and to relieve stress. Now, he's attended a number of our events, and I've never heard him blame the tobacco industry for his nicotine dependency. Yes, there are smokers who wish they'd never started or would like to quit, but lots of people smoke because they enjoy it. It's not something you hear very often these days because it doesn't suit the anti-smoking zeitgeist. Hence, a lot of people are shy smokers. In the same way, a lot of voters are shy conservatives. <laughs> now, I'd like to briefly talk about the fact there isn't a tobacco industry representative uh, here tonight. And uh, you might wonder why that is. Well, it's because, and I don't blame the union for this at all, but the union basically were bullied into withdrawing an invitation to a senior tobacco ex executive from Imperial Tobacco. Now, some of you might have read uh, the chair wall recently, and the union came under enormous pressure to, to um, withdraw that invitation. I'll quote Dr. Vaughan Rees, a uh, lecturer at Harvard University. He was quoted in Chairwell as saying, the nature of the debate itself is deeply disturbing. The tobacco industry has a history of engaging in deceptive behavior to further their interests while improving their public image. More recently, they have attempted to adopt principles of corporate social responsibility, and I see this... The union made an independent decision not to uphold sponsorship from the tobacco industry. Thank you for that. And he finished by saying, I see this debate as part of that effort. Deborah Arnott, chief executive of the fake charity action on smoking and health, she said, and I, again I quote from Cherwell, the tobacco industry truly is morally reprehensible. And I find it hard to believe that any students with half a brain could come to any other conclusion. So there you are, ladies and gentlemen, God has spoken. If you vote against this motion tonight, you only have half a brain. Now, what is morally reprehensible is not the fact that the tobacco industry wanted to engage with young adults and have a serious debate. It's the fact that the tobacco control industry, represented by our opponents here tonight, regularly tries to perform, uh, tries to no-platform a legitimate industry from defending itself both in public and in private. So, ladies and gentlemen, the underlying assumption of the motion here tonight is that the tobacco industry has huge power. I would suggest that after 15 years of almost constant regulation, bans on tobacco advertising and sponsorship, the prohibition of smoking in the workplace, including every pub and private members club, a ban on tobacco vending machines, a ban on the display of tobacco in shops, a ban on smoking in private vehicles carrying children, and most recently, a ban on branding. All the power lies not in the hands of some morally reprehensible industry, but in the hands of the morally reprehensible modern temperance movement. I urge you tonight to reject this motion, reject paternalism, reject censorship, and vote for freedom of choice and personal responsibility. Thank you.